One of the major difficulties in multi-target tracking problems is balancing searching for new targets and tracking detected targets. Our algorithms try and strike a balance and maximize the information that they can gain about the targets on the road network. So a couple assumptions about the work I've done. First off, we assume that each of the targets is constrained to a road network. So on the left here, you can see an actual road network from OpenStreetMap. And on the right, you can see a likelihood network that we built from that road network. So the likelihood network actually says what sort of targets we're dealing with. If you have low likelihood, you assume that there aren't any targets available in that area. And if you have high likelihood, you expect that there'd be a target around and you could detect it eventually. We also assume that each of the UAVs can communicate and they actually use this likelihood network to communicate with one another and determine where they think that the targets are on the road network based off of the likelihood close to them as well as globally on the, the road network. And since we assume that the targets are constrained to the road network, we can also assume something about how they're moving and how the likelihood is moving in the absence of measurements. And finally, we assume that each of the UAVs have a local field of view, so they can only see a certain subset of the entire road network and they have a probability of detection and probably a false alarm in that area. So when we're actually moving around the likelihood network, we're updating it in a certain way, and we're doing it using something called a likelihood ratio tracker. If there's no target present while we're taking measurements, there's only noise in our sensor. But in the case where there's actually a target present, there's a signal and there's noise. So we actually have a difference between the two signals we could have, and there's a little bit of overlap, as you can see here, for this measurement response graph. So when there's an overlap, you have the potential to have missed detections and false alarms if you don't have a high enough criterion for detection. Next, once we actually detect a target, we instantiate a probability surface for where we think a particular target is. So in this case, you can actually see that one UAV is detecting a target. The magenta target um, is being detected by the magenta UAV. And you can actually see the tracker probability surface being instantiated. And that indicates where we think the target is um, after it's been detected. And from there, we'll actually determine where we think the target will move in the future and where we're currently measuring it to be. So the backbone of this tracker is to be able to predict where we think a target will be in the future once we've actually detected it. So when the target's constrained to the road network, we can actually say something about where it will be in the future based on where it was in the past. So the question then is, well, which measurement should be going to which tracker once we've detected multiple targets? To deal with this, we actually use what's known as earth mover distance to compare each measurement to each tracker and determine which measurement should be used to update each tracker. So in the case where we have multiple trackers here, you can see that there are different distributions for each tracker and you have a particular measurement distribution. So the way we use earth mover distance to determine which tracker gets the measurement is we compare in distance the measurement to each tracker and then we solve it as a sort of transportation problem. So we move the measurement distribution on top of the tracker, compare how similar the two distributions are, and then based on how similar they are based off of that earth mover distance, we then determine which measurement should go to which tracker recursively for each measurement. So then we need to determine where each UAV is going to move in the future to make sure that it's maximizing the information it can collect and detecting as many targets as possible. So we actually use a, a sort of gradient force to move our UAVs up the likelihood so that we'll actually be moving on each time step to a new location that has higher likelihood than we were currently at. So as the UAV measures the, the ground below it and its field of view, it actually is lowering or raising likelihood accordingly, and then it'll be looking in the future to go to a, an area that has higher likelihood than it's currently at, so that it can actually detect a target in the future. Um, but where the problem gets interesting where Brett's research um, um, kicked in, was to try to solve the problem where if you had more vehicles than drones. And so the idea there is that the drones need to fly around detecting the vehicles and then once they detect the vehicles they need to maintain an estimate of where that vehicle is even if they don't maintain um, constant surveillance of that vehicle. And so where Brett's research focused on was the idea that rather than just loitering over detected vehicles, could we balance both the task of searching for new targets and uh, maintaining a position estimate on known targets? We end up with two different motion planning algorithms. The first algorithm is to simply loiter over a particular target once it's been detected and continually measure where it is and localize where it is on the road network. The second is to use a sort of search and loitering algorithm. So we'll detect a target, we'll loiter over that target, and then as we localize it very well, we will then search for other targets on the network and then return to that particular target we detected 
to relocalize it as the measurements that we use fuse out based off of that motion update. This problem of surveilling road networks, I think, is of interest to, to, uh, to L3 Unmanned Systems and, and perhaps to some of their sponsors. Um, but more generally, it un uncovered some interesting theoretical questions, too, having to do with basic research in multi-target tracking and in cooperative control. So the question of how you model and predict the target motion when you're not, um, when you're not um, collecting measurements of it um, is an interesting one, particularly when you're looking at it on a road network. Um, and so there's some interesting theoretical questions that came out of Brett's research, as well as the obvious um, um, real-world applications. Thank you.